Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, your home of all things stock investment and personal finance related. In today's video, I'm pleased to welcome back the CEO of Control Technologies, Paul Gezi, to the channel. They've just came out with a major strategy change or update at the company, adopting a Bitcoin focused balance sheet strategy. A lot to talk about in today's interview, but before we do, please take a second, smash the like button, you guys. Big help to myself and the channel. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to join. And let me know in the comments section below what you think about this strategy shift at Control technologies, your thoughts on Bitcoin overall, and sentiment towards Bitcoin price in the final few months of 2024. Now with that being said, let's get into today's interview. Okay guys, so that's right. Today's video, we've got the CEO of Control Technologies back on the program, Paul Gezi. There's been a number of key updates since our last interview that we wanted to get into today's presentation. So Paul, thanks so much for being here and really appreciate the time. Yeah, great to be back. Thank you. Hey, now I know you just put out a great press release this morning, a couple different elements there that we wanted to address in today's video. So first and foremost, We've talked about some of the M&A in this sector on previous interviews. You've announced another uh, M&A endeavor. So can you walk us through that one to kick off today, Paul? Sure. So I think when we uh, last uh, spoke, there's a couple of things we talked about. One was cleaning up the balance sheet. So I'm going to start there because that was really important. So uh, all secured debt has been paid down. And we've actually gone from an interest payer to an interest generator. So we're now generating interest income. Uh, we've got about 11 million of cash in the balance sheet. Uh, 10 million is invested in what I would call GICs and, and, and uh, government bonds, so earning about 4%. And that's kind of our, our cash for the future. Um, and I think that cash will continue to grow. We've got some holdbacks coming in. So we feel like we're in really great shape on the balance sheet. That balance sheet is going to be used, some of it's going to be used for MA. And the way we're looking at MA in this market, the market's a little different than it was a few years ago. You know, we're looking at small tuck-ins that are profitable uh, and that we can kind of roll up three or four of these deals to, to double our revenues uh, by the end of next year. And the types of deals that we're looking at are very comparable to our business, you know, three to four million of revenue, 15 to 25% EBITDA margin. And really the, the secret sauce there is we don't have to go for financing. I don't need equity. I don't need bank debt. We're buying them at about three and a half times EBITDA, which I think is really good value. You know, in a normal market, a company uh, that's growing would be trading at eight, eight to 10 times EBITDA. So there's arbitrage there. That may not show up right away. That's just the way the market works. But over time, if I do a few of those and put them together and I can show a path to doubling our revenue by next year, I think the market's going to receive that, you know, warmly. And um, so that's, you know, we're on track for that. I got lots of deals. We're not moving, you know, um, abruptly. We're, we're going very uh, expeditiously. And there's just lots of deals that we can do. we got cash on the balance sheet and we're in a good place. Great. Now, I want to talk about that cash position and balance sheet in a second here as the uh, second piece of today's press release. But you talk about some of these fold-in M&A activities. For anyone who's maybe unfamiliar with the control technology story, can you talk about the underlying business here and exactly what verticals uh, these M&As are taking place in? Sure. So in simple terms, our customers own buildings or manage buildings. Think of commercial and industrial towers. And those towers typically have a very robust HVAC systems, which essentially run the heating and cooling of the building. Without those systems, the buildings can't operate. So we provide services and solutions that manage those, service those, so there's recurring revenue there, and also improves those or optimizes those uh, in real time. So that combination right now is running at about half recurring and half project, which is a really nice place to be because those margins tend to be very good. Our, our overall margin is about 50%. And, you know, really what we have to do is add scale to the business. And we're doing that both organically and through m and Sure. And thanks for the reminder there. So it's, it's a building technology company. Now you talk about uh, doubling the revenue profile, recurring revenue, which is one of the key features I was really attracted to originally with the control story. Can you talk about profitability or the path towards profitability now uh, in terms of control tech? 
Sure. So the company has been profitable uh, up until this point. We uh, sold a couple businesses, did really well on those. Uh, I think the math in the market is pretty clear that we got you know great premium for the acquisitions that we made. So now to get back to profitability, you know we've gone through some M and A expenses. Uh, we've put that cash on the books, and now we're looking at being profitable next year and uh, doing that both organically and through M and A. And if you think about the type of M and A that we're doing, you know if you're buying three million of revenue and you're adding let's say half a million of profit, and you do that a few times and you add that to our existing base. You can kind of see how you can double that fairly quickly if you do that three or four times over. So we're excited about that. And uh, yes, the company has been profitable in the past. We're going to get back to there next year. Now, I know you've been on the channel for quite some time. So for viewers who are unfamiliar, the Control Technologies partnership started quite some time ago, really in this smart building technology space. Now, since then, there's been a number of key changes, obviously, in the macroeconomic environment. We've kept in touch, Paul, and you've started to discuss this Bitcoin idea or adopting a Bitcoin strategy as part of your balance sheet uh, at Control Technologies. So that's actually the second part of today's press release. And I'm curious to get your thoughts first off on where this idea came from and why you think this may be a, a great move for shareholders and then exactly uh, the next steps or strategy towards implementing this. Sure. We could probably talk for hours, but we'll, we'll keep it tight. Um, you know, this is something I've been thinking about for a year or so. Um, so it's under what I would call board review. And then, you know, upon board adoption, it goes to buying Bitcoin. And we can talk about how we do that. And there's the short term and the long term. So it, when I think about you know the long term, the real impetus here is governments are forever printing money, and it's you know it's become so apparent that it's really one of the only levers they have in this modern age is just print more. You got a problem, print more. You got a problem, print more. I think Bitcoin and, and Bitcoin gold are both an elegant solution. I think Bitcoin has different properties than gold. Um, and I think that's what excites me about uh, creating that store of value, that digital asset that really is, in a sense, deflationary on its own against an inflationary backdrop. And I don't see any government around the world, you know, rolling in their spending, balancing budgets. I mean, it's just it, it, you print until there's an event. And that's really where we are. And it's, it's unsustainable. Right. You can see that in inflation posted inflation versus real inflation. And we all know what that means. So we're, I'm excited about it. Um, I think there's different opportunities to capture what's happening in the Bitcoin space. And if we think about Bitcoin from four years ago to today, it has evolved. It's become more institutional. BlackRock has been hugely successful. I think it's the most successful ETF ever rolled out. Uh, and I think, you know, we're getting adoption around the world in terms of what this could be. Companies like MetaPlanet, have really done well under this kind of added to the balance sheet. So, so we're excited about the potential of that. Yeah, I definitely agree. It It uh, is an exciting story to follow personally, as this is a big area of interest on the channel. And for myself, from a, an investment standpoint, it's going to be interesting to continue to follow this story as it progresses here, Paul. Um, what can we watch for in terms of next steps or press releases as part of this continuation? Sure. So if you think about that cash on the balance sheet, you know, our, our goal is to grow that. Uh, and so if we're doing m and it has to be accretive where the cash is coming back into the business. Um, so the, the, um, the benefit of being profitable is you can then roll your profits into your treasury. And under a treasury management program, if you've got cash and bonds and Bitcoin and you're growing that Bitcoin, that's the way we look at it uh, internally. And then what percentage of that balance sheet is Bitcoin. And if Bitcoin's growing over time, then the balance sheet's going to prosper and benefit. So I think what you'll see is, you know, after our board review, um, you know, we'll be moving in the direction of, of direct acquisition. And then from there, it'll be growing that. Uh, and then from there, it'll really be, you know, as, as Sailor says, Bitcoin's going to be around after I'm, you know, I'm gone, right? That's the famous Sailor quote, Michael Sailor. And so I think if the market thinks about, you know, one in three year time horizons, we're, we're growing, we're profitable, we're adding Bitcoin. I mean, if you think about 10, 15, 20 years down the road, what's the value of Bitcoin? You know, that's and that's really where it gets really interesting as a as really a deflationary deflationary currency. Um, 
in, in an inflationary backdrop. I don't think the inflationary backdrop is changing anytime soon. Yeah, unfortunately, oh. nor do I. And I don't know where the price of Bitcoin will be in 10 or 15 years, but I do think higher than where it is today. And we're already starting to see those green shoots in a lot of the Bitcoin proxies that we cover on the channel, which obviously made this a very, very interesting story to follow. So, Paul, we'll leave a link to the company corporate website in the video description below. If anyone has questions for you personally, I'll uh, send them over. Please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'll throw the mic back to you for any closing thoughts, but appreciate the update today and congratulations on uh, the first step in adopting this Bitcoin balance sheet approach. Yeah, thank you. So I think control is in the middle of a turnaround. I think we're excited about the future. There's lots of levers we can pull to create value. Um, you know, Bitcoin is, is part of that. m and is part of that. And I think uh, we'll definitely reconnect. And as we make progress, we'll come back and, and share some more good news. Sounds like a plan. Thanks so much for the time today, you guys. Feel free to subscribe, like the video, and we'll see you here tomorrow.